I'd like to welcome everybody to the uh, America's 2021 All Media Reception. Um, we'll start tonight with a walkthrough of the exhibition for everybody to view online. And then we'll hopefully have a juror's talk at 7 p.m., followed by an announcement of the awards and a Q&A, and then another overview of the exhibition. Thank you. And without further ado, All Media 2021. I mean, it's almost like a welcome to North Dakota in a sense. I'd like to welcome everybody that's joining over Zoom. I see that we have a few artists uh, in attendance on Zoom. We also have some people here in person. Uh, we'll start out the night, as you can see, with an uh, overview of the exhibition, and then we'll continue from there. It's really cool to see artists from all over the United States, New York, from the West Coast as well, Peter Bazchek, Rob Pearson. It's always really cool to be able to put people with the artwork that we receive. Uh, so I'm happy to have everyone here tonight. Thank you. 
I don't think he's here yet. Yeah, what do you mean? Yeah, you think I'm supposed to? He's supposed to. I want to meet up, but I'll see if he is. He's here now. Yeah, I'm actually getting quite a few. Oh, I see. Yeah. Yep. So, yeah. Can you hear it? Yep. You can hear it. Oh, that's fine. We're looking at the pieces. And we have this. They have this video so that they can hear. Oh, we have. So, here in the Pure Bastion, this print is right there. Um, so if everybody's, if everybody's in the chat and we're on Zoom, um, we have primarily Monday State University uh, students here right now. They're admiring your work and checking out all the pieces in the gallery. Yes. Uh, yes. Oh, that's so amazing. Honestly, too. That's so amazing. I haven't had a screen in a screen in one of the so to that too, but um, yeah. we actually give up some information. Yeah. 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 So we'll have we'll have a talk and, and I know our jury isn't here yet. Yeah. So it has a little concern. Yeah. <laughs> if for some reason if he isn't able to make it, um I would be sure. Is he my not? No, he's he's a general role, he's in Savannah yeah. Jordan. He teaches that. Oh yeah, it's kind of uh, so he's not here physically. He's not here physically. He's supposed to be here. So, <laughs> but I don't. I haven't seen him. Uh, well, okay. Okay. Yeah. 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 <laughs> 
Good to see you virtually, all the way from Northern Arizona. Hello. Thank <laughs> 
Okay. Hello, everybody online. We're going to have remarks in just a second. Let me gather everybody together in the gallery here. Yes. Yes. There we go. Um, I'd like to welcome everybody to the Northwest Art Center. Uh, it's amazing to have uh, all of the attendees uh, virtually tonight. Uh, we're very fortunate to be able to have uh, so many of the exhibiting artists uh, with us. We have a few here in the gallery with us, but then we also um, have uh, a wonderful amount online. Um, I regret to say, unfortunately, that our, our juror tonight was not able to make it. Uh, Zig Jackson is not here with us, um, so we won't be able to hear his thoughts, but I'm going to try to connect with him um, at a later time and do a, a short conversation about the show, uh, record that, and then hope to be able to, to send that out, out so that you guys can watch it and then hear the, the jurors' thoughts on the exhibition. Um, I'd like to uh, thank um, all of the artists for attending tonight and for submitting your work uh, to these juried shows that we have here at Minot State. 
Um, I know we have some artists that have submitted uh, multiple times or, or in some cases for many years. And it's always wonderful to see your work and to be able to bring your work to our little corner here in Minot, North Dakota and expose both our student audiences to it, um, but also our, our community and our public audiences. It's wonderful to be able to see contemporary work um, for this exhibition in all media um, and to be able to have it here in, in Minot, North Dakota. Um, I'd also like to thank all of our students for attending, even though, as we all know with students, it's often that they're voluntold. Uh, <laughs> but um, it's wonderful to have them here and have the opportunity to see uh, the work that is being exhibited. Um, lastly, I'd like to thank our North Dakota Council on the Arts, uh, because without their support, um, exhibitions like this and programming like this would be um, not as possible. So uh, without further ado, normally I'd turn it over to a juror at this point. Um, but I think what we'll do is I'll go straight and I do have the, the selection of awards. Um, so we're going to start with uh, some of the merit awards that were selected for the uh, exhibition. Um, I'm gonna give this to somebody else. Here, Peter, <laughs> you can control the Zoom. Uh, I'll start, I'm, I'm actually quite close to, to it right now where it is on the wall. Um, we got to look through the exhibition earlier uh, and see kind of where things were. Um, let's see, Sally, can I have you go ahead and turn your video on? So you'll be able to see uh, NAC2 here. Um, and the piece, uh, one of the Merit Award winners is a, a etching in aquatint by uh, Peter Bazchek Diagonals. Um, it's truly a, a wonderful print, um, very technically, well done, and I, I'm always always uh, kind of eager to see uh, Peter's prints when when they get here because um, there are many artists that have a really fine technical uh, ability to their craft. But one of the things, Peter, I always do when I show students your pieces is I always have to show them the back of the work too, and how meticulously you document your process and your methods and the um the exactness of, of just how you go about making the print and, and what what it pertains um, that is something that students and undergraduates and even a lot of professional artists uh don't do a lot of a lot do but but it's kind of it's always fascinating to see that so um, Peter, would you would you want to say a little bit about your piece? Hi. Um, hello. I'm gonna have to turn up the volume. Hold on, it got muted. Can you hear me? There we go. We can hear you now. Uh, just, I'm, okay. Hi from Oakland, California. Uh, yes, I, I do enter your shows a lot. I really respect uh, what what you and the school stand for in terms of uh, inviting um, artists in to show work in your facility. So it, it is an honor to be in the show always, regardless of awards. And I'm, I'm especially happy to get an award, a uh, nerd award. Um, I, I work primarily in etchings, uh, although I've been playing around with um, lithography and I'm actually doing a lino, a lino cut right now. But um, I've, I'm very comfortable working um, on place. And my imagery is, of course, realistic and typically uh, uh, urban landscapes. And this, this composition struck me because of the composition. I was out on a walk. And I just saw this looking down. And I was just struck by basically all the diagonals that compromise this composition. And that's why I call it diagonal, because it, it just struck me as uh, such a strong statement and a, a cohesive statement in terms of uh, leading you in and out of the image. Uh, so uh, that's about it. Uh, it's just a standard traditional handling of an aqua tint uh, and uh, on a copper plate. And uh, I do document the work a lot. You mentioned I do, I do always include my print documentation in the back just uh, for provenance sake or whatever. But uh, anyway, thank you very much for showing my work, choosing my work, and awarding it.
Could I, right. could I Thank ask? You, Peter. Oh, oh, go ahead. Could yeah. I ask, Peter, how do you document the process on the back of your work? Well, I just include, um, I print these up. Uh, they're just print documentation sheets that I make up. So basically, um, they would tell uh, well, my information, my name, whatever, uh, the paper I use, the size of the paper, the size of the image, the press that I use. I have my own press in my studio. Uh, then I go into the addition of total number of prints made. Uh, I think that's the addition of 70, I think. It's not handy right now, but I, obviously I print more than 70 to get an addition of 70. Mm -hmm. So I, I would list like artist proofs, trial proofs. I do cancellation proof, which is where, where I actually deface or somehow mark up the plate. So, and I print that to show that there are no more available. Um, and uh, I also include typically, if they're in a collect, uh, you know, uh, important collections uh, and any awards. So of course I have to update my uh, documentation with the print uh, and that's it. And then it's, it's, it's what, what a lot of printmakers should be doing with their print is documenting them, letting people know who buy their work that, you know, this is a truly limited printed edition. It's not going to be, uh, uh, it's not limited to how many I can sell. I, I establish a number and I write it down and it's official and uh, it, it it helps in the provenance and the and the, the value of the piece because people know that this is truly limited. Thank you. That's awesome. I've never heard of anybody doing that. I love the idea. So I'll definitely be stealing that from you. <laughs> that's yep. That's yeah, wonderful. That's Thank you, Peter. Um, everybody, let's go ahead. We'll give Peter a hand for his merit award. <laughs> Okay, um, so Sally, we're gonna have to, let me see, where are we gonna move? Cause we're gonna have to move to a, another work. Um, we're gonna show a piece that's on the, the center wall um, in the gallery right here now. Um, a, another merit award that was chosen by Zig Jackson for the exhibition was uh, Christina Alfrey's Cairn. Um, it is a acrylic and water media uh, painting. And I don't believe that Christine is with us tonight. Let me check really quick. No, but um, Christine is a artist that has entered the juried exhibitions at Minot State University uh, for many years. Um, and she, she has gotten in a, a few times, um, but she always has um, these wonderfully um, abstract or abstracted compositions um, with acrylic water media and occasionally oil. Um, and she has quite a body of work in terms of these abstract paintings that um, it's interesting to see them grow and change over the years as she, she enters the shows and it exhibits in the shows. I think everybody can see that. Hopefully you can see that online pretty good. They're also linked on the website. You'll be able to find a high resolution, resolution version of, of all of the works. Um, I should mention too, one of the really neat things about the exhibition is just the amount of variety of places where this work comes from. Um, Christina is from Wisconsin. And we have artists in this show from all over the United States. Um, and we do have uh, an artist from Canada in this exhibition as well. And we don't have anybody from overseas, but we'll often even get work in the exhibitions from Europe, Russia, um, South America. Uh, so it's really fascinating to see uh, the reach of these juried exhibitions and that we'll get work from from Greece and Russia too. So it's a, it's a really fascinating thing. Okay, so what I'll do is I'll go ahead and move on to our next, um, gotta find my list here. Maybe not as prepared as I hoped I'd be. <laughs> there we go. Um, actually, we'll, we'll, I'll have Sally, I'll have you go around to the other wall um, and we will look at other merit award. And what I'll do is I'll give you the list because 
For some of these other ones, we do have the artists in attendance. So we'll go ahead. We'll go ahead and we can we'll look at at that one next. I don't know. I'll have to check and see. Um, okay, the next work that we're going to look at is um, in a format that we don't often see uh, in the gallery or something that you'd see maybe submitted to long distance exhibitions or, or traveling exhibitions, but we have a, a large hanging piece. It's a, a wire and yarn sculpture. The title of the work is Source Abstract. Um, and this piece uh, is actually uh, from the, the Canadian artist, Jason Bassels from Brampton, Ontario. This one is suspended from the ceiling and creates kind of a, um, a very interesting interplay of color and line and kind of that hanging sense. I'm gonna actually pause for just a second. I'll let you guys look at that and I'm gonna grab something. When I was going to be talking about the work, I didn't put much forethought into it here because I figured we'd have our juror to go off of. But what I'm going to do is for the exhibiting artists that are not here, I'm going to quickly run and grab their artist statements for their pieces, and then I'll read those. So the, the piece, Source Abstract, was, um, was actually shipped in a large cardboard carton, and it was packed. Um, it's, I mean, when you can think of it, it's wire and string, and it's you know, pretty, pretty resilient in that sense. But it was actually just enclosed within the box and fastened to the sides of the box. So it was shipped in that sense, which is just kind of interesting and not something you'd commonly see and definitely something that wouldn't work with like a rigid three-dimensional piece but just due to the nature of the work it shipped quite well and and was quite light so okay we could we could go to next piece i'm i don't have them handy unfortunately so let's go I didn't want to give any clues away until um, Sally was able to show us the piece that receives the next merit awards because we we have an artist for this piece that's also in attendance so we'll get to ask him some questions about the work um, but the next merit award is for Mark Holter and the work is domestic goddess of death so I'm going to put you I'm going to have to put you on the spot Mark it's all right <laughs> Um, but Mark Holter is uh, a, a North Dakota artist. Uh, he's currently residing in Fargo, North Dakota, and the work uh, is mixed media on canvas. So, Mark, I'm gonna I'm gonna let you if if you'd like to say a little bit about the piece, and um, perhaps I'll just open it up to you. Yeah. No. Thank you. Um... You know, when I when I came up with this piece and, and the pieces that I have in the in the show are actually um, 
pieces from a, a kind of an entire series that I did while um, you know I was confined to the house during COVID like everybody else, right? And you know, during COVID, there was some interesting things that happened, and it gave me a lot of time to kind of work and almost kind of communicate some of the things that I, I was feeling in some of the pieces, and also to kind of really examine some things and, and think about, you know, what can I say on a, on a canvas that will start people talking about something, start a conversation. And domestic goddess of death came to me just um, to kind of talk about the historic role that society has seen women in from you know, the early days into the 50s, which the, the piece kind of captures some of that, where it, it's like, you know, if, if you look at it from the, from the perspective of what society has expected of women throughout history. And when you look at the reality, in my opinion, again, that women, um, especially today, even though it, it doesn't necessarily register in you know, jobs or pay or anything like that, but I mean, women control um, kind of the soul, I guess, of, you know, with having children and things like that. My wife uh, is a science teacher and incredibly way more smarter than I am. And we've had a lot of discussions on title rules and things that we do. So I just wanted to say something with this piece that was like, you know, let's have that conversation. Let's talk about it and, you know, get people thinking away from what they grew up learning like you know with the different generational uh type of types of things that you know men are taught you know in regards to women and um you know just to kind of a little side thing about that piece is you know my wife is featured in that piece um you know in our, in our kitchen as well as you know being a, a very willing model and letting me put paint on her and take pictures of her and then throw it on the computer and kind of mess with it a little bit and then um apply it to the canvas and that's the piece you see so oh, yeah. Okay, thank you, Mark. Sorry about that. <laughs> Having a little bit of technical problems with my microphone. Um, I'd like to go to another work that's in that part of the gallery back over here for our next Merit Award. Um, the, the next and final Merit Award is another painting, Oil on Canvas. Um, and this piece is Artist Walks into a Bar by John Gamere. And John is here with us uh, tonight as well uh, from Morrisville, Pennsylvania. Um, and I'd, I'd like, John, would you be willing to, to say a few words about, about your work um, for both our audience online here and uh, in the gallery? Okay, John, are you able to hear me? No, nope. it's okay. <laughs> can you hear me now? We can, we can. This is the age we live in now. Okay, you can hear me though. Okay, cool. <laughs> anyway, uh, once again, just to, to uh, say how delighted I am to be part of the show and uh, to be recognized like this. Um, I. I've always painted a lot of things that were um, uh, 
representatives, re representational scenes in uh, built environments, either cityscapes, whatever, in this case, an interior scene. Um, this happens to be, um, name of the place is the Trenton Social, Trenton, New Jersey, across the river, where a lot of artists and um, other interesting people hang out. Um, I guess uh, I, I like the, the community there. Uh, there are a lot of places around here that are, you know, just have a, a really strong sense of community and I like to reflect that. Um, I also, when, when I do um, things that are um, based on interior scenes or cityscapes, whatever, um, as I'm working on them, I kind of, I kind of find, I, I, I get a kick out of the, uh, I guess, you know, the, like the happy accidents that happen, that I come across with, with the shapes. In this case, um, just to give an example, uh, the lights on the ceiling. I like, I like working with the red against the uh, most, mostly pink background there, but the, the red uh, with the light coming through it, but also the shapes of the, um, the triangular um, lights there. And that's echoed with the, uh, happens to be my friend's uh, glass there on the bar. That's, uh, that's kind of the, uh, upside down version of that shape. Uh, so th things like that, I um, enjoy working with those things as they come along, as I say, the happy accidents. Um, and uh, I guess that's about it. Thank you. Thank you very much, John. Um, we'll go now to our best of show piece. Um, and the, the best of show piece is another artist uh, that's entered the show a few times. Uh, an artist that is uh, a, a still a, a relatively young artist, but the, the piece that's chosen for best of show is Carlos Herarte. Uh, and he's from uh, Iowa, Clarion, Iowa. The, it's a photograph and the title is Reflections of an Independent Mind. So I'll let everybody look at this piece. I don't think Carlos is here tonight. Um, as I had mentioned before, one of the things that I'll look to do is to connect with, with Zig Jackson and, and do kind of a conversation Q&A with him and we'll, we'll be able to receive his thoughts um, about the exhibition uh, and uh, the awards. And then I'll be able to send that out to uh, the participating artists so they can hear that. Um, what I'd also like to do tonight is we do have a number of artists in attendance that have work in the gallery. Um, there are some, some pieces that I think it'd be great to recognize them uh, for being here. Um, well, after, so as soon as we look at the, the best of show piece, just a little bit longer here, we'll go to some of the artists uh, that we have in attendance um, and, and speak about their work. I'd like to uh, say hello to, to Blair. Tour, who's in the audience, and also Michael Power. Thank you for attending. It's great to have you in person in the gallery. Um, Blair's work is the um, the pieces that are the fabric quilts that are on each wall here. And then we have a, a photograph. Sorry, Michael. Michael Nowatny. I'm really sorry. We have we have a number of Michaels in the show. We, well, we have Michael Howard's work is in the show too, but your piece is your your piece is over here. So, um, but we'll take a look at those. I know that we have uh, Rhonda Erdang in attendance as well um, with her work here, and and um, we'll try to hear from everybody. If you'd like to specifically have any questions about. Um, any one piece, whether you're online or here in person, uh, we can check and, and there's, a, there's a, you know, a fair good chance that we might be able to ask the artist directly about 
their work. Um, right now, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make a change here to the Zoom settings to put a spotlight on, on our roving camera. And then we'll, we'll get started and we'll, we'll see from these artists. Okay, much better. Now we have the camera spotlight so we can see the pieces that we're looking at online. Um, and while we're there, um, Rhonda Erdang is a, uh, an artist that it's always a joy to have uh, your work and to see your work enter the shows and to see it change as well. Um, Rhonda, would you like to speak a little bit about your process in terms of, of the fomages that you do and, and, and kind of like the historical um, kind of twisting and, and, and playing and um, kind of recontextualizing that you do in your, your collage? Well, um, thank you for, um, I'm, I'm, I'm excited that uh, Zig Jackson was able to select this piece. Uh, he is directly responsible for this piece because he really, when I, 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 I counted up today, this is the ninth show I've been in up in, in Minot. Uh, which I'm always, uh, it's always a pleasure to have my work shown in your gallery. Um, and um, I'm always, um, I, the first thing I do when I get something from Minot is to read about the juror. And uh, this juror, Zig Jackson, really excited me. About 10 or 12 years ago, I was doing a bunch of small collages and uh, this is kind of, uh, this painting grew out of that. I kind of got bored with my paperwork, so I went back to painting again this year uh, after my mother died of COVID in December. So um, I needed to have some fun. So, um, and I really rely on my memory the story of, of this, which is, uh, which I talk about in my artist statement, which took me about two days to write. I, um, I went back in my memory to uh, when I lived in Omaha, Nebraska, and uh, my um, indigenous, indigenous or Native American friends. And so that's how this mixed media piece came about. And uh, I'm working on, on about three, three more of these paintings, and uh, they're just kind of fun uh, because uh, there's a lot of history behind it. I I like to paint again, um, so I just wanted to thank you for thank Zig Jackson for selecting this piece because uh, it gives me a little bit of hope that maybe I can keep painting again. So thank you. I'll make sure, I'll make sure, sure. sorry, I'll make sure to convey those thanks to him uh, the next time that I speak with him. Okay, great. I think there, he's probably reading. Um, I'd like to go to one of our artists that we have uh, in the gallery to, to uh, so I know where you traveled from Minnesota uh, to see the exhibition. Um, would you like to comment on your, your process and the series of the, the specific works that you have in the gallery art? Um, Blair's works are uh, in the gallery, it's uh, Evan, and then uh, the post. Oh, sorry. Um, this portrait in front of me titled Evan um, is of my son. And then I have a self-portrait around the corner 
Um, and both of these pieces are from an 11 piece collection that I did um, very recently. This, this collection came out in 2020 um, and it is of each of my nine children, my husband and myself. Um, sorry, I get a little nervous about speaking. So. Um, and, and what I learned in creating this collection is that um, I had a story to tell, I'm a storyteller, textile artist. Um, and so this entire collection about my family, uh, it's very personal for me. Um, I didn't realize that I was gonna be so personal and honest and vulnerable with my work, but um, this whole collection is about my experience as an outsider in my own family. I'm the only white person. Um, and it's about the emotional roller coaster that I ride um, standing on the outside of their cultural and spiritual experiences, but privileged enough to look in. Um, we raise our children traditionally. Um, and so there's a lot of things that we do culturally and spiritually that I can participate in and a lot of things that we do that I can't. Um, and so this whole collection is just me sharing that journey. Um, and each of these pieces has a QR code next to it. I wrote a little artist statement or um, essay about each of the pieces. Um, and so with this piece, what this means to me is um, it, in Ojibwe culture, um, when like we do a first kill ceremony, um, so this is about my son getting his first year. And um, in that ceremony, it's, it's incredibly beautiful, actually. Um, he, I have to offer him a bite of, the, of his deer that he got, and he has to refuse me. And he refuses me, and he says, um, no, I'm thinking about the elders who can't get out and hunt. And I try to feed him again, and he refuses me again. And he says, no, I'm thinking about all of the children who have nobody to care for them. And then I offer it to him again, and he refuses me again. And he says, no, I'm thinking about my community and all of the people who came here to support me. And I offer it, offer it to him again, and he finally gets to take a bite. And... And then my husband explains to him that um, this, that you've just changed your life. You're no longer a child, you're a man. And what that means in our culture is that you have the ability to take care of other people. That's what it means to be a man. And so anytime you um, acquire abundance, in any way, whether it's hunting, fishing, trapping, or making money, um, you need to remember your elders who don't have access. You need to remember children who are in need. You need to remember other people in your community. Um, and then he packages up the rest of the deer and gives it all away to everybody who came. Um, so reinforcing that like life is not just about you. <laughs> um, and, and I just think that's such a beautiful teaching. And, and so I'm not here to just like teach people about Ojibwe culture, but I'm here to ask the question, what does it mean to be a man in our society? Like, how do we describe that to people? What do we, what are our rites of passage? Like, is it when you magically turn 18? Is it when you drive a car? Is it when you get a job? Like, what does it mean? What are, what are we communicating that it means to be a man in our culture? I don't know. I don't know. Um, so I'm raising that question. And the reason 
then he doesn't have an arrow in this piece, though he's holding a bow, is because he's no, no longer like striving to achieve. He's, his and arrow has already landed. Like he's already become what he's trying to become. Um, and then, sorry, I don't mean to talk so much. I will try to be more concise with my next piece. So this is my self-portrait. Um, and it is about the cocktail of hope and despair that I feel um, as an outsider in my family. Um, I'm of Scandinavian descent, but I don't even know what that means. I, I have no idea what that means to me. Um, I, my husband is a culture bearer, spiritual leader, um, Ojibwe language revivalist, like activist, all like all of these things. And, um, because he's in charge of our spiritual life, like we've decided that's how we're raising our children. Sometimes I feel lost. Like I'm, I don't have access. I'm not a part of it. Um, it's not my story. And so this portrait is about feeling lost, but the antlers are on top of my head as if to say that there's something incredible about me too. I too possess a spectacular gift. And even if I can't see it, I can feel it as though it's within my very bones passed down from my ancient tribe too. And someday I will know how to use it and be empowered by it. So those are about those specific pieces in the show. Thank you so much. I don't know where he went. Oh. <laughs> oh. There we go. Hi, folks. Uh, this is my piece over here, The Driver. Uh, I've, all I've been doing all my life for about 48 years is creating images. I don't know any other types of art, painting, sculpture, anything. Uh, <coughs> excuse me. But uh, one of the things I find proud in my life, and it's been happening uh, actually with moderate success, is entering these George shows. And what I find is it kind of humbles me uh, to have my work accepted at a show and hung on a gallery wall. Anything else after that is kind of icing on the cake. But like I said, I've been doing uh, photography for 40, uh, 48 years now, I believe. And, and uh, I did uh, police photography, wedding photography, any type of photography, or as my brother likes to call it, crap that I can do, right? <laughs> But uh, uh, finding images, I'm not, I don't specify myself. When I do my photography, I like to keep it uh, you know, somewhat to what the image is, not uh, going off onto uh, 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 abstract or anything like that. I have abstract photography, but it seems more on a photography level. So anyhow, and like this picture here, uh, I took this up at Road America in, uh, in uh, Wisconsin. I'm from Milwaukee. And uh, I do shoot for like SCCA, Sports Car Club of America, uh, Midwest Council, Sports Car Clubs, and a few other racing leagues around the country. But uh, this happens to be a friend of mine. And what I like about this picture or, or this, this image is that uh, you can't tell if it's a male or female. And uh, she's a friend of mine. Her name is Jessica. And uh, She's, she's a female, but you can't tell it. But what I like about this picture, and somebody described it as being deep and detailed. And why I say that, if you look into the sunglasses, you have 
the uh, dashboard, the steering wheel, and the tachometer of the car. She drives an 87 BMW pickup truck, which is kind of weird. But uh, uh, but I, I, I find that I, I, I like the detail. I'll go be between black and white and color. And uh, I just try and find out details of my images. And, you know, like this image here, I, you know, I, I even got permission from Justin. You know, she said, this is a fantastic image. And I kind of agree with her, besides being my own. But uh, that's what I do, just photography. And I really like coming out to this show here. I've been entered a couple times out here and got pieces in the wall and stuff like that. So anyhow, I just thank you. And thank you for letting me talk to you guys. There's, uh, let me see, I'm, okay, I'm still unmuted. There's a, a couple other artists too that have work uh, in the show. I know uh, Shannon, I think is here tonight. Um, let's see, the, the work uh, of, of Shannon's that's in the show um, is, we have Sally come over here, Shannon Conley from Moore, Oklahoma. Um, the piece is a, a fascinating uh, quilted work um, Kiragami number three, open windows. I was wondering if, if Shannon, let me make sure that I'm not muted. If Shannon can hear me, Oklahoma. Yep. <laughs> yep. I'm here. <laughs> All right. Um, thank you so much for including my work in this show. I'm an art quilter and I was so excited to see, um, the spectacular fiber pieces that we just heard about. Um, my work is much more abstract and it's about shape and form and space and how you can um, encapsulate those things in something that is typically very soft and fluid. And so I've done a lot of work on um, sculpting with fiber pieces in the last four or five years. And this is one of those works. So thank you very much for including it. It's a wonderful piece. I'm glad we got to show but in the in the exhibition, um, it was it was one of those like one of the one of the best things about uh, receiving all the work is every time you get a package with an artwork in it, you of course you have your as a gallery administrator, you know you have your condition report book, you're checking the package for signs of damage, you're doing all of those things, but then it's like you get to unwrap this you know wonderful beautiful thing and see it for the first time in real life, and it's always always a pleasure. And like this piece was one of those, just seeing how it was constructed, how it was formed. Uh, and it was really, really fun to, to put in the exhibition and to hang. I'm thinking, I'm gonna check here and see where we're getting to um, a little bit close to eight, but I wanna make sure that if we have anybody else that's in the exhibition that's online um, that we can talk. I know we have uh, Courtney, your work is the, the ceramics piece here, one of the three-dimensional pieces that's in the exhibition. Um, and I'd like to know more about, uh, also from Oklahoma, from Tulsa, Oklahoma, yes. so hence the shout out I, get, I, I, I see now. <laughs> um, but the title of the piece is Mindful and it's ceramic stoneware. Um, and would you like to say a little bit about uh, the work and your experience? Yes, I would love to. Um, yeah, so exciting. Go Oklahoma. You said that and I freaked out. Um, yeah, I love to throw and it was just something that I took to like in like high school, like I'm young high, I was like seven years ago for me, um, but I just absolutely love it. And like the more that I've worked with it, there is a spiritual connection there for me where um, just sitting at the wheel, I like I can just see the presence um, of God, like I'm Christian high, um, but I can see the presence of God like through that medium and through the practice and like the stillness and the presence that it takes um, that I lack. And so it's just a really like mindful practice for me as I like sit at the wheel and like wrestle with the clay as it like goes all crazy on um, a spinning contraption. <laughs> and I think about and reflect on my life and the chaos of how my life is and who I am as an individual. Like I lack every ounce of stillness. Um, and so just like sitting at the wheel and shaping and forming a vessel, like the first thing that you do is you have to center the clay and get it to a point of stillness so that it can be built. Um, and I reflect and think on that um, and how 
stillness has become central to my spiritual walk and daily life. And uh, my work visually represents that as it is just a very simple, clean form. Um, and I love that. And that's definitely a favorite quality of my visual work is that it doesn't, it's not demanding that you think a lot or that you do a lot. It's really just something that you experience and approach. Um, and I think it invites a sort of stillness that um, that is just kind of calming in a way. I really like the, the stewardship and the purpose behind each of my vessels and they all can vary in size, but I really love this size because it kind of demands like kind of demands that you take a, a second to look at it, but at the same time, it could just be like a piece from Hobby Lobby, <laughs> but like I've shaped it and formed it and um, really enjoyed the mindfulness of that process. So herein lies mindful. <laughs> Thank you for letting me speak. It's an honor to be exhibited amongst so many, so many wonderful works <laughs> and to learn from you all. I'm a undergrad BFA student at Oklahoma State, so Go Pokes. <laughs> I really look forward to Paul. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. It is, it is always really uh, cool to see the range uh, in the exhibitions. So you say you're undergraduate in Oklahoma. And yes, so we have, we have a range because the exhibition is open to, uh, you know, uh, student graduates, student, undergraduate student, professional artists that are experienced, mature artists who are, have been practicing for many, many years. And it's really cool to see works from artists of, of all varieties and, and at many different paths in their kind of creative journey. Um, we do have two other artists that are with us tonight um, that uh, we haven't heard from yet. And we'll see uh, if they wanted to say a little bit about their pieces, but we have, um, let's see, it's, uh, I think Carolyn Albrecht, I believe is here, who has some works that's uh, in the other part of the gallery. I wanna make sure I'm, I'm trying very hard to get everybody's name right. So I'll have to see, but I know, I believe Carolyn is here. I'm gonna check, check all of our participants here just to make sure. Yes, Carolyn Albrecht is here. And then we also have um, Tammy Brackett is also in attendance. So um, we'll show their work now. And, and if they'd like to, to comment a little bit about the pieces, a little bit about their process, certainly we'd like, love to hear from you. But if we don't, if we don't have microphones either, that's fine. Um, um, I'll go ahead and go over to that side of the gallery. And so, uh, Carolyn Albrecht, Wayne, Nebraska, and the work is watercolor and mixed media. She has two pieces in the show. The one we're looking at currently is specimen, natural curiosity. And then the other work that she has is also watercolor and mixed media, and it's entitled Ignorance, Red, White, and Red. And we, Carolyn might be in the chat, but she maybe is away from her computer. We are, we are going a little bit long. But they're truly, beautiful pieces that incorporate uh, stitching, um, water media, um, some mixed media application with a lot of, of symbolism and pattern work. And they are also, they're both truly wonderful to look at. Let's see, I'm gonna find our, our final artist that's here. Gotta remember where Tammy's piece Right. Okay, that's right. We're going right back over here. Oh, it's not my fault that I. It's it's an in, in, unforgettable piece. Unforgettable piece. Um, so Tammy uh, Renee Brackett, is Andover, New York. She's uh, talked to me in the chat a little bit ago, and she's saying something right now. But the work is 
um, Untitled Remnant 2, and it is a, a wonderful uh, deer hide, laser etched deer hide with thread and then an embroidery hoop. So it's stitched together, but it's a beautiful piece. I can talk oh, to there you. There you are. Oh, great. If you like. Um, I apologize. I'm coming to you from my basement. So um, spectacular view here in Andover, New York from down under. Um, I'm super excited to be included in the show and it's great to hear from the other artists. Um, I was jotting notes uh, throughout uh, hearing the other artists speak. I think um, it was Rhonda that mentioned the death of her mother and the, the impact that that had on her work. And that's something that is absolutely um, something that has influenced my work Lately, uh, the passing of generations, finding myself becoming closer to being the elder in the family. Um, and then, you know, also Blaine's work caught my attention right away. And I was super excited to hear her speak about that because um, I, Blaine, I think we should talk maybe offline and chat a little bit because there are so many things about my work, I think that overlap and trying to find your place and feeling a little bit like an outsider. So this work is made from deer hide and the deer hide is uh, deer hide that I tan myself. And it's um, speaking of hunting traditions that I never really knew much about growing up because we never, we didn't hunt in my family. We were farmers and we rode horses and um, we were cute little girls with pigtails and uh, we didn't, we didn't go out and, and hunt animals. So it's something that I've come to do actually, uh, we describe it as adult onset hunting. Um, and uh, I've learned to do that, but at the same time, while I'm doing the seemingly masculine hunting out in the woods that is uh, very much a part of where I live in Western New York, I'm also trying to connect to those traditions of the women in my family who were quilters um, and who were interested in the the patterns that surround them so that tool pattern of the English countryside and fox hunting is actually from my childhood home so that was the wallpaper in my house that my mother was very fond of although it was never a hunting that we could participate in and then the uh hunter's star quilt block pattern is etched in a piece there too that's a little more close to kind of the American tradition of hunting and an American quilt block pattern. And my grandmother and her grandmother and her grandmother right, um, all were quilters. So it's me kind of delving into that tradition. So you can see that kind of in the way the piece is put together. Um, the, the reference to actually tanning the hide and the stretching of the hide that is there in the embroidery hoop. So trying to pull all of that stuff together in an effort to understand myself and where I come from, the traditions that I grew up knowing, the traditions that I am creating for myself now, and asking questions about the uh, gender appropriateness of what I determined to do. Uh, it seems like now I can decide to do whatever I want to, so I do. Anyway, um, that's long-winded, and thank you for listening. To me and thank you for including me in the show. Thank you very much, Tammy. It was great to, to hear about the piece and being behind it. Um, we're coming to a close to our exhibition. Um, I'd like to thank everybody for attending uh, and everybody online that was able to join us. Uh, it was Really great to have you here to hear you speak about your work. Um, thank you so much for, for being able to attend virtually and in person. And Larry, and for all of our students, um, I know that we have, we actually have some that are uh, here still with us. And uh, I know just from looking around, everybody enjoyed uh, hearing from you and, and looking at your work. I'll go ahead and I know before we started talking, um, we didn't quite to get to do a, a full uh, kind of circuit around again. So we'll continue to showcase the, the or showcase the last of the work uh, in that walkthrough, um, and then we'll be finished for tonight. But thank you very much, everyone. Uh,
I didn't, I didn't, I wasn't able to post those QR codes uh, in the chat. So I'll go ahead and go do that now. Um, and you can see those that'll pop up in, in the chat. And if anybody would like to come and speak with any of the artists here, I'm going to go ahead and leave the center unit here um, with the mic on and the volume on. So. All right. Well, yes. <laughs> Thank you. Very cool. Hi. You guys, you did great. I just love seeing your work, and it was really nice to hear you guys talk today. It was so wonderful to hear you talk. Thank you so much for sharing your story. Even just the vulnerability that you exhibit shows so much about who you are. And like, you can so clearly see that reflected in your work. <laughs> yeah, I appreciate that. It was really nice to meet you guys. So Wish you could have been here. here. Thank you for being there for all of us. <laughs> Bye everyone. Bye. Thank you. 